Would you join us as we sing in the singing of our national anthem? seated. <coughs> Bonjour and welcome to uh, Convocation 2023, our second ceremony in our spring uh, series of convocations uh, today. I'm very pleased to welcome all of you who are in the room uh, with me today and I also want to welcome those of you from home who are joining online from across the globe. So welcome to our ceremony here in Moncton this afternoon. We have several special guests with us today that I'd like to issue a special welcome to. Uh, from the city of Moncton, we welcome Deputy Mayor Brian Butler. We also welcome Crandall board members, Doug Schofield and his wife, Kathleen. And from the office of the Honorable Sherry Wilson, Lisa DeVoe. Parents, Family members and friends of the graduands, welcome. We're glad that you're here. We're so very pleased and we welcome you to sit back and enjoy this moment as we celebrate with those in the front seats who have achieved a major milestone in their life. The proceedings for today's ceremonies are uh, recorded in your program and they'll proceed unannounced. So I now declare our convocation open and I invite the Reverend Dr. Greg Jones to lead in prayer. Let's pray. Lord God, we gather here this afternoon recognizing that you are creator, redeemer, sustainer of all, the author of all good, the source of all truth, the architect of genuine life and beauty. We are here at this intersection of past and future honoring and celebrating accomplishment while looking ahead to new opportunities, continued growth, and yet to be realized blessings for society and for our world. May this ceremony in essence be a prayer that these graduands may faithfully steward the scholarly gifts which you have apportioned for service to you and our wider world. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to you for the provision of this school, its supporters, faculty, and staff that make quality learning possible. We also are thankful for the soon-to-be graduates, their families and friends who invested of themselves here and who have blessed and enriched this community of learning and living. May each of us fully understand that in the broadening of our learning, we also have a responsibility to widen our gaze and hearts towards the world you love. And we pray these things in and through the one who is the true revelation of you, Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. The university scripture is Colossians 1, 15 to 23. Christ is the visible image of invisible God. He existed before anything was created and is supreme over all creation. 
for through him God recreated everything in the heavenly realms and on the earth. He made the things we can see and the things we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authority. Everything was created through him and for him. He existed before anything else, and he holds all creation together. Christ is also the head of the church, which is his body. He's the beginning supreme over all who rise from the dead. So he's first in everything. For God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ, and through him, God reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on the earth by means of Christ's blood on the cross. This includes you who were once far away from God. You were his enemies separated from him by your evil thoughts and action. Now he has reconciled to himself to the death of the Christ in his physical body. As a result, he has brought you to into his own presence and you are holy and blameless as you stand before him without a single fault. You must continue to believe this truth and stand firmly in it. Don't drift away from the assurance you received when you heard the good news. The good news has been preached all over the world and I and Paul has been appointed as God's servant to proclaim it. On behalf of the Board of Governors of Crandall University, I'd like to congratulate each one of you, the graduates, on the completion of this stage of your education. I know that some of you may be going on to further studies even now, and I uh, wish you well in those. Some of you are going back to the work placements you've been in. Some of you are moving to new work placements. And there's two words I want to remind you. Respect and teamwork. As you work together with your employees, the other employees, your supervisors, the employers, as you work together respectfully, as you share the knowledge you gained in your courses, as you work together as a team, your business that you're working in can thrive. Now, I notice these ones with the blue on their things because I'm a graduate of um, education. I have a master's in education as well. And I just I can remember very well that time. And with, with you, I just want to point out that as you work together with other teachers in your staff, as you work together with the parents of the children, as you appreciate the children that you are teaching and their uniqueness, and yes, those uniqueness can be uh, some problems for you some days. As you appreciate that, you together with the other educators in your building will provide a child-centered, student-centered workplace where children can grow and learn and you as educators can grow and learn. And I would encourage you in that same way. I'd like to thank you for choosing Crandall. I pray that the education you received here prepares you to, in your chosen careers. It's, today is a time to celebrate your hard work and your accomplishments. And also take the time to just focus on the hope, the promise that God has for you. And I want to leave you with this verse in Isaiah 58, 11. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs in a sun-scorched land and will strengthen your frame. You will be like a well-watered garden, like a spring whose waters never fail. May God keep your waters well, your waters well uh, hydrated as you go into the business, as you go into your education, as you go on further. Thank you. I invite you to join us as we sing of God's faithfulness and his goodness. Let's join our voices together. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God Oh my 
This morning, we had the privilege of presenting our special guest with an honorary Doctor of Laws degree. We're very pleased that he's able to be with us this afternoon and to deliver the convocation address, and I would like to introduce him to you. Perhaps not since Baptist preacher Tommy Douglas has Canada enjoyed the service of a Christian statesman, statesman of the stature and integrity of Preston Manning. Mr. Manning has devoted his public life to improving the lot of all Canadians in a career that has significantly impacted this nation's political landscape. Often known as the father of Canadian modern-day conservatism, Manning demonstrated political promise early in his career. After graduating from the University of Alberta, he helped his father write the book Political Realignment in 1967. And this is a book in which he laid out his vision for Canadian politics. Manning launched a career as a management consultant in the energy industry, and for about 20 years served as president and CEO of Slave Lake Developments, a community development company with indigenous participation dedicated to the social and economic development of North Central Alberta. In 1987, Mr. Manning founded the Reform Party, Four years later, the party voted to expand its influence to a national scale. In his book, The New Canada, in 1992, Manning outlined the mission of this new party, and its influence on the party's central tenets and policies was considerable. 
In 1993, Mr. Manning was elected to the Canadian House of Commons for the riding of Calgary Southwest and continued to serve as a member of parliament until 2001. During these years, the Reform Party became the official opposition and Manning served as the leader of the opposition until 2000. He led the transformation of the Reform Party into the Canadian Conservative Reform Alliance, which in turn united with the former Progressive, uh, Progressive Conservative Party of Canada to form the modern Conservative Party of Canada. This new party obtained a majority federal government under Stephen Harper. Even after retirement, Mr. Manning continued his political work, forming the Manning Center for Building Democracy and the Canada Strong and Free Network, which today carries on the work of this center. Mr. Manning is the author of several books and has been awarded honorary degrees from a number of universities across Canada. He's also been honored with the nation's highest civilian award, the Companion of the Order of Canada. Mr. Manning's honesty, his authentic Christian faith, admirable authenticity, careful speech, and humble promotion of principle over his own advancement made him today a deserving recipient of Crandall's Honorary Doctor of Laws degree. We're so pleased this afternoon to have Mr. Manning return and to deliver the commencement address. President Fawcett, uh, Chancellor Simmons, uh, distinguished guests and uh, graduates of Crandall University and friends and family. Uh, I first of all just want to thank you for giving me the opportunity to join with you on this day. Th this is your day. You are the center of what we want to talk and think about and it's a major milestone in your life as you uh, uh, prepare for whatever comes next. Uh, I also want to say a special thank you to Dr. Fawcett and the Senate and the Board of uh, uh, Crandall University for this honorary Doctor of Laws degree which was conferred on me uh, earlier. Uh, lest you be too impressed with this, uh, my wife reminds me of a man who received such a degree and later heard his young daughter discussing this with a telephone caller to their home. And the caller said uh, something like, I suppose we will now have to call your dad doctor. To which the daughter, obviously unimpressed, replied, I suppose you can, but he's not really the kind of doctor that can do you any good. <laughs> of course, nobody can say that about your degrees. And uh, again, congratulations on all the work and the effort that it, it entails for you to get to this uh, point. Now, as you may have guessed, because I have a, a political background, I've listened to and given many speeches, many of which, including most of my own, deserve to be uh, forgotten. <laughs> but many years ago, I heard a speech which was so striking that I've never forgotten it. And it's the essence of that speech that I want to pass on to you. At the time, I lived in the city of Edmonton, which was the home of uh, many new Canadians, many of them from Central and uh, Eastern Europe. And they would conduct celebrations uh, uh, of important days in their own national histories. And uh, I was invited to attend one of these by the Latvian community, which was uh, celebrating the brief period when it had enjoyed independence from the great powers which were constantly invading and suppressing it. And th the main address that day was given by this Latvian scholar uh, who urged her audience to never forget what she called the three great commandments of Western civilization. And, and what were those three great commandments which I pass on to you today for your guidance and your encouragement going forward? The three commandments were know thyself from Socrates and the Greeks, control thyself from the Hebrew and Roman lawgivers, and give thyself from Jesus of Nazareth and, his, uh, and those that have followed him and believe in him. So let me just talk a little bit about those. The first, know thyself. This injunction raises the 
issue of personal identity. And today there's such a thing as identity politics, which says that you should define your personal identity in terms of race, nationality, religion, gender, sexual orientation, social class, or economic standing. And it offers agendas and policies addressed to those identities. The, the Christian conception of personal identity, however, is very different. It tells us that we are beings made in the image of God, and our personal identity is based on our relationship with him, whether we are distant and alienated from him or whether we've been reconciled to him through faith. So your generation, I'd suggest, has a choice to make with respect to personal identity. Uh, is it to be de defined by looking at yourself, at your race, your culture, your sexual orientation? Or by looking outward and beyond, is it to be defined by your relationship to a being that is infinitely greater and larger than ourselves? N know thyself, know thyself. It's an old, old commandment of Western civilization. And then there's control thyself. Many of you, by virtue of your training, are going to be leaders in the field where you're involved. But as the great uh, John Milton once wrote, if you are prepared to govern others, you must first learn the government of yourself. Milton was a great fan of Oliver Cromwell. And he wrote about Cromwell, he first learned the government of himself and over himself gained many personal victories so that when the day came to take the field against the external enemy, he was already skilled in the toils and exigencies of conflict, governing yourself. That means deciding what laws or rules are to govern your own conduct and relationships. Will they be those suggested by a contemporary moral and ethical movements, such as those connected with critical race theory or wokeism, or next year's philosophical fixation, whatever that may be? Or will you be governed by more ancient rules that have stood the test of time? These are simple rules, but they're easy to remember. Don't lie. Don't steal. Don't kill. Be faithful in your relationships and do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Control thyself, but decide by what rules you will do so and whether they are trustworthy because their source is trustworthy and because they've stood the test of time. And then give thyself. We heard a talk last night from a couple of the Crandall scholars that were being honored at the banquet and the ancient Greeks, as you will know, and they pointed out, had three words for love. Uh, eros, meaning erotic self-love, uh, philia, meaning friendship or brotherly love, and agape, meaning self-sacrificial love, love that gives of itself on behalf of others, the type of love taught and exemplified by Jesus of Nazareth. Much of today's culture is fixated on eros, self-love that aims at sexual expression and sexual gratification. But what the world needs much more of is agape, self-sacrificial love that puts the service of others ahead of the service to oneself. Very few institutions of higher learning in this country today focus on the teaching and the necessity and the modalities of self-sacrificial love. But Crandall is one of them, and you are the beneficiaries of that focus. So give thyself as you go forward into your careers. My prayer is that this self-sacrificial service would be the distinguishing feature of your relationship to others. Now, lastly, with respect to giving yourselves, I'd like to make a special appeal to those of you who might be called new Canadians or who come from families that have come to Canada recently from other countries that do not enjoy the rights and freedoms that Canadians often take for granted. Many people born in Canada and raised in Canada take our freedoms for granted. Freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom to vote for whoever you choose. And they're taken for granted because we've never seen them threatened 
or lost. But if you or your family come from countries where the politics is corrupt and where freedom and human rights are suppressed by dictators or unfair laws and discriminatory practices, there is a special way in which you can give of yourselves to Canada, and that is to share your stories and experience about how precious freedom is, about how easily it can be lost if it's taken for granted, and about how it must be vigorously exercised to be maintained. I strongly urge you to do that, to share your stories, and particularly share your stories with Canadians that take freedom for granted, and give of yourself to Canada in this way. And I thank you in advance for this invaluable contribution to our country. Congratulations again to all of you. May you truly know yourselves, control yourselves, and give yourselves to others and to this country. And may you experience God's protection and direction as you do so. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand before you today just 55 days away from retiring. <laughs> Not that I'm counting. I have an app on my phone that does that for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking, uh, uh, Matt, thank you so much for that song. Like, all my life he has been faithful. Uh, just unbelievable uh, announcement and pronouncement, you know, of, of God's working in our lives. And uh, uh, it's just incredible when I look out over this sea of students. And when I think back to five years ago when I came back to Crandall, uh, it, it wouldn't have looked like this. It was pretty white and there wasn't a turban to be seen in the place. And I thank God for each and every one of you. And I thank God that I have had the opportunity to be here in this role as the dean, first dean of international academic programs, which is now called Graduate Studies. I also want to say thanks so much to my wife for being here today. I drug her along with me. Um, thank you, Judy. Uh, and sitting beside her is one of the most important people in my work life here at Crandall. And you guys probably all know who she is, and I want you to give her a huge round of applause, Ms. Erin Bateman. I don't know how she kept me straight, over so many changes that we had in those early days, but we did it together. And uh, it was a wonderful, wonderful experience. I was also thinking about the verse in the Old Testament where it says that we need to stand in the gap. And that's what I really think that Crandall has been doing over these last five years as well, and reaching out to those around the world who may want to study in Canada, who may want to emigrate to Canada who may want to find out more about Christ from a different perspective. And so I say thank you to each of you who, who come. It's difficult um, saying a lot of these names, but Dr. Olhauser is a real chicken. And I'm thrilled to do it, actually, so this will be the last time I will do this as a full-time employee at Crandall, and I've been doing it for the last 10 years, five years here, and my last five years at Cape Breton University, and I really enjoy doing it, and I tell my students all the time, there's nothing more important to you than your name, it's really a critical thing, so I always try to do my best to say it as best as I can, but I also always apologize <laughs> for not getting it necessarily correct. All right. Greetings, Mr. Chancellor, Mr. President and Vice Chancellor, 
members of our provincial and local governments, distinguished guests, members of the University Senate by whose authority we confer these academic credentials today, members of the academic faculty and staff, and of course, you, our graduates. It's my pleasure to present our graduates who have successfully completed the prescribed courses for their respective degrees. The names of all graduates shall be called the names of those graduates whose degrees are presented in absentia will be called at the end of the conferred degrees. With no further ado, I welcome those members of the platform party assisting the chancellor with the presentation of credentials to assume their places as the first graduates come forward. Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree Master of Education. Amanda Offrey. Miranda Davidson. Renee Doris Marie Gagnon. <laughs> Laura Ann Hibert. <laughs> Corey John Padden. Amanda Dawn Pearson. Michelle Dawn Robichaud. <laughs> Jana Hillary Stevenson. Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree Master of Management. Send you. <laughs> Jaron Mary Abraham. Aisha. Huayd <laughs> Afsar. <laughs> Harsh Alawat. Humaid Nafis Ahmed. <laughs> Shilavi Ali. <laughs> Syed Anush Ali.
Karu Saravanan Anamalai. Naresh Antala. Hari Apurva. Barty Aurora. <clears throat> Anisha Banis. How are you? Nice to see you. I often tell my Spanish speaking students, I love saying their names. Not that I don't like saying them all, but they just have so much music to them. And uh, being a musician, it means so Maria Clara Castellanos Capacho. <laughs> Mary Aquila Priya Chala. How are you, Pinky? Pinky Chowdhury. <laughs> Jennifer Bernadette Costa. Sharan Vijay D'Souza. Ishan Dabra. Vine Dahia. Ganesh Reddy Dantla. <laughs> Kushantaka Chaturani Dasanakaya. <laughs> Varinder Deep. Sergio Alexander Del Carpio Flores. <laughs> Karamvir Singh Danoa. <laughs> Abshar Diamond. Siam Vipul Doshi. <laughs> Alicia Marisa D'Souza. <laughs> Erehani Faji. Carolina Falcon Moncado. <laughs> Tassin Fatima. <laughs> Shabina Firos. I'm good, AJ. Nice to see you. AJ Daramshi Gabani. (laughs) 
I warned her. Eros Yulam Javami Jale Parger Feature. Gayatri Gopala Krishnan. So nice to see you. Oh, indeed. <laughs> Jolie Nicolette Graham Dyer. <laughs> Andrew Gupta. Suji Iswarya and Jetty. <laughs> Jebin Gio Jacob. <laughs> Gina Jacob. Anubhav Jandial. Jenny George Jose. Nitin Kocha Vilakatu Jose. Ashley Arpit Joseph. <laughs> Nikhil Joseph. <laughs> Shubham Kalatiya. Danish Kapoor. <laughs> Amit Rajav Bai Kazwala. <laughs> Charnit Kaur. Gagan Deep Core <laughs> Hardeep Core <laughs> Manpreet Core. Manpreet Kaur. Rajdeep Kaur. Kaur would be like brown in India. They're everywhere. Rajpinder Kaur. Rajwinder Kaur. <laughs> Sandeep Jeet Kaur. <laughs> Sorry, it's not Kaur. <laughs> Kira Nishit Kavadia. <laughs> oh. 
owner and operator of Emporium Restaurant downtown, Shrey Khanna. <laughs> free advertising. <laughs> Rosman Rustam Katri. <laughs> Nitin Kumar. <laughs> Akanksha Kumari. Suraj Kirti Kumar Khuri. <laughs> Ria Kariakose. <laughs> Srikala Sukikate Porath. Nahal Moli Lobo. Limal Kathana Parambil Madhu. Keaton Manushk by Makani. Our President of Graduate Student Society, Ms. Nandini Malhotra. <laughs> Sriangini Maniatu. Mohammed Masroor. <laughs> Aparna Matthew. <laughs> Abimanyu Matu. Srikant Manon. <laughs> Randolph Ronald Miranda. <laughs> Namrata Mishra. Nazim Shifnas Mohammed Arif. Krishnadas Mohandas. Laura Ivan Moreno Rodriguez. Hitish Damjabai Munjapara. <laughs> Rehana Mansi. <laughs> Kalana Muta Tuage. Siram Reddy Miadada. <laughs> Hamza Nadim. <laughs> Mr. 
Mamta Nagpal. Shahansha Nasimsha. Ana Lucia Navia Herrera. I remember the day when she came into my class and I looked at the class list and her name is Queen Elizabeth Oakwam. I'm not kidding. Queen Elizabeth Oakwam. I had Queen Elizabeth in my class. <laughs> Sorry, Queen. No, I'm not. <laughs> Evelyn from Maleo Oleode. <laughs> Julio Cesar Ortega Torres. Ahuna Oswagwu. <laughs> Siavash Paksad. <laughs> Kavita Pandey. Neharika Parashar. Raghav Kripa Pare. Darshan Kumar Maganbai Patel. Cricket star extraordinaire, Taran Kumar Patel. <laughs> Rajesh Patel. <laughs> Andy Shane Pereira. Jason Peter. <laughs> Sai Krishna Reddy Paidamarla. <laughs> Mukesh Puri. Swapnil Rajput. <laughs> Shivendra Rana. <laughs> Rockneb Robles Castillo. Vishnu Priya Chetikotu Sadasivan. <laughs> you know, sometimes the students, knowing that I was struggling with their names, oh, so this is what, so her name is Sri Lakshmi. She, just call me Sri. Just call me Sri. Sri Lakshmi Shashidharan.
Deval Himatbai Savalia. Sanket Nayan Kumar Shah. Mohammed Joeb Yusuf Bai Sheikh. Nita Chanel. Atul Sharma. Kapil Sharma. Kuldeep Sharma. Neha Sharma. Sushil Sharma. Suvis Sharma. Shilpa Mutabande Shiam Sunter. Farha Sadiq. <laughs> Sumit Kaur Sidhu. <laughs> Harmeet Singh. Tushar Singh. <laughs> Inderdeep Singh. <laughs> Kubir Singh. Mohit Singh. <laughs> Navpreet Singh. <laughs> Ranjit Singh. Dale Suarez. I do too. Ran Song. <laughs> Esther Sharon Sony. Vaishnavi Srikala Gopal. <laughs> Grishma Velimatam Sukumaran. And Shultakur. (Applause) 
Rose Maria Thata Yamkulam Jose. <laughs> Rohin Reggie Thomas. Ayushi Meheshbai Tibadia. Gautam Tulugu. <laughs> Louise Enrique Valem de Lima Campos. Cesar Alberto Vargas Pardo. <laughs> Susan Varghese. <laughs> Siddharth Vij. Priti Yadav. <laughs> oh no, I'm going to try it all. Oh, come on. Oh, yeah. Payal Ashvin by Yoganandi. <laughs> Lubna Zier. Mr. Chancellor, we are not done yet. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, it gives me great pleasure to present to you the individuals who have successfully completed the requirements for the degree, degree Master of Organizational Management, Boana. <laughs> Sneha Annie Abraham. Yatunde Abimbola Hade Doyen. Oh, yeah. Ulufemi Oladipo Ajayi. Oyeleke Olatunji Akandi. <laughs> Marion E.C. Akebemman. <laughs> Earl Ali. Aluchi Martha Amadi. <laughs> Adele Ardestani. <laughs> Christopher Mba Ayebe. Let me see, Mark Babino. <laughs> Charlene Broad. <laughs> J. 
Chan Wai Fei. Nishant Tilari Gay. Amaka Noaneka Donald Ibe. I think they're hoping I'm going to mess it up. I don't know, but <laughs> Sophia Onyeka Etuhube. To the Barry Christine as in Wafor. <laughs> Ranjit Ja. Abijit Aaron Kasarikar. Gaurav Kumar Toshibai Kenny. <laughs> Julia Ogechi Kakeme. <laughs> Tisha Manur. Mallory Moore. <laughs> Dang Tu Kwe Nguyen. <laughs> Adebimpe Olabosepo <laughs> Nikosin Alakai. Nwaj Yugo Chibweze. Nika Chinyere in Wuju. Joy Idioma Chinomso Ogidi. <laughs> Matilda Olisola Ogunlayir. <laughs> Nehita Silvia Okodua. On your may obey, but Regu Raj Ravindra Nair. Khaled Razam. Olusei Segun Olarerin. Anuz Shaji.
Huma Shireen. Janelo Uchebu. Atika Anas Vahura. Ant Wadwa. And Le Jong. Mr. Chancellor, I'd now like to read the names of those graduates who are not here in person today. Uh, you can uh, give a round of applause after I'm done all the names, please. Hannah Amadi, Rebecca Lynn Bairdsley, Megan Elderkin, Ashley Hache, don't want to miss anyone, Monique Marie Hughes, Taylor Faustina McGuinness Hicks, Sebastian Murphy, Patrick Whitaker. Those were all Masters of Education students. These next are Masters of Management. Pushdeep, Saif Bali, Juan Pablo Alan Amescua, Rakna Kishorbai Bhatt, Simriti Chohan, Anmal Gupta, Madan Kartikeyan Demomadaran, Sachin Jagdish Dulakche, Ashlyn Jude, Parth Kishorbai Jajdia, Shristi Khanna, Sukmeet Kaur, Sruthi Krishna, Mde Molai, Ferdus Subair Mohammed, Abaram Mutavarapu, Davia Najali, Vivek Saini, Jaswinder Singh Sandhu, Bharti Shokin, Gil Jaspal Singh Lakvinder Singh, Gurjan Singh, Swati Sood, Nishti Talati, and these from Master of Organizational Management, Jesse Chibuike Echefu, Billy Joe Levi, and M. Wamwosa Okoro. Mr. Chancellor, I welcome you to address the graduates and bestow their credentials. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Brown. Um, may I just be permitted a personal word from my wife, Faye, and myself? And it takes a lot of preparation and work to get where you are today. We just want to tell you how proud we are of all of you and wish you the very best in your future. By the calling of our mission, and by the authority of Provincial Charter and of the Senate of the University. It is my great pleasure to admit you to the respective degree, rank, and title of Master of Education, Master of Management, and Master of Organizational Management. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the graduates of 2023 of Crandall University. Congratulations. <laughs> well done. <laughs>
by the Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. John Allhauser, and Secretary of Senate, Ms. Mary Beth Leboutier. And this year's winner is Nadine Malhotra. Nandini Malhotra. Well, we're coming toward the end of our time together. Our plane is about to land, as they say. And uh, it's very uh, common that toward the end of our convocation ceremonies, I take a moment and uh, provide a little update on what is new at the university. So I'm going to take the opportunity to do that. Uh, and I will say this just before I do that. I, I've been serving as president now for about 11 years. I'm about to begin my 12th year. And in these years, I've learned that it takes a big team to contribute toward the education of students. And we're very proud of our faculty. They're well published, very engaged in service to our community and to their professional societies. And these things are very important to us. But what we are more proud of is the example and mentoring that they provide to students, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom. And uh, we just are so pleased with our professors who strive to, strive to live exemplary lives and encourage our students with love and with kindness. And I'm deeply grateful to each professor. And in the same way, I have a great admiration for our hardworking and compassionate staff. And their love for our students is regularly seen through an encouraging word and a voice of support. So faculty and staff, on behalf of our students who are here and their families who are here and watching online, thank you to each one for the positive impact you've had in the lives of our students. Let's give a round of applause for our faculty and staff. In terms of highlights this year, let me begin by congratulating three of our faculty members who are promoted this year. Ms. Heather Steves to Associate Professor of Business, Dr. Keith Grant to Associate Professor of History with tenure, and Dr. Diu hak to Professor of Management. Now here are a few highlights. The first highlight is this. By my estimation, I prevented 10 people from walking off the stage onto the ground <laughs> this afternoon. So uh, that's why they put the big guy at the end, to steer people down the ramp. So that's a victory. The second victory is this. I'm very pleased to announce that we've been the recipient of a major grant from the Atlantic Baptist Foundation, and later this month, heat pumps are going into this roof to air condition this space. All of us who have been wearing robes are so pleased to hear that and to learn that. Here are a few other highlights. Uh, once again, here at Crandall, we've experienced record enrollment, so we're pleased with that. Also, as a privately funded university, we depend upon the gifts of people to help support the education of students here. And this year, we received the largest gift to our annual operating fund in our history, so we're very pleased about that. We've also this year received the largest ever gift to our endowment fund, and we're grateful to those donors. For uh, the third year, we've been able to freeze tuition to help students out with the cost of uh, schooling. This fall, our entering classes for virtually all of our academic programs were full. Campus housing was functionally full. Last summer, we did a complete renovation and overhaul of our kitchen and dining facilities. Two new student lounges were built this past summer. Our writing and student success center was expanded and relocated. Our campus bookstore was moved to the top floor of Stoltz Hall. We built a new office suite to uh, house our student life and transformation team. 
Starting on Monday, there will be a million dollar expansion and upgrade to the Rollick Library. Since summer of 2022, we added 26 brand new full-time positions for faculty and staff to serve our growing student body. Our chapel program had its highest attendance over the past decade. And in the past five years, we've intentionally internationalized, as you can tell, and we've welcomed students from 57 countries to Crandall. So thank you. We're very pleased as well that uh, amongst our staff team and our faculty team, faculty team, racial and ethnic diversity has increased as we've added new faculty and staff. On the sports front, there are so many things I could say, but I'll say just a few. One is, some of you may know that we have the only varsity boxing program of any university in Canada. And so, this year, we represented Canada at the World University Boxing Championships in Turkey. And in the fall, which was exciting, and uh, Dr. Olhauser is the boxing coach, some of you may know. And also this fall, we hosted a team from the US Military Academy at West Point. We had a 10 bout afternoon. They won five and we won five. Split decision. So we look forward to having them back. Uh, also, I was just very pleased this year that we were able to host the ACAA Cross Country Championships here uh, in Moncton, and that our men's team and our women's team won the conference finals and went to nationals. So we're very proud of them. So this has been a great year, and I thank you to each student who's contributed toward that. And I know, graduates, that uh, your time here would not have been successful without the support of your family and your friends. Some of them are in this room and some of them are watching online. So I want to give you an opportunity to stand up, turn around and wave to all of those who've supported you during your time here. So please uh, go ahead. So in conclusion, let me say this. Thank you all, online or in person, for joining us for this spring convocation ceremony. And graduates, let me wish you all the best as you begin this next chapter in your life. Believe it or not, I know you think I'm only 35 years old, but <laughs> it's been wishful thinking. Uh, it's been almost 40 years since I came to Crandall as a student. And yeah, wow, it's not, it's not possible, is it? Uh, but I want to tell you this. Uh, I met my wife here as a student nearly 40 years ago. And in the years since we've graduated, we've made it a priority to support Crandall financially. And some of you, when you get established in your careers and you get settled, I want to encourage you to consider doing the same thing. There will be students who come after you who can benefit from your generosity. So I would encourage you to think about that. And all of us have friends and family members that are wondering what the next chapter in their life might be. And it might be right here. So we want to encourage you to, uh, to direct them toward Crandall. We have limited numbers of seats available for our programs next year, but we do have a few. So graduates, we're so proud of you, and we pray for God's blessing upon you as you leave Crandall and continue uh, with your life into its next chapter. And to conclude our time together, before, uh, before we sing, I'm going to invite Dr. Knowles to come and to pray for you. Dr. Knowles. Following the benediction, we'll remain standing for the university hymn. Uh, followed by the recessional, and you're all invited to a reception in Stultz Hall following the activities here in the gymnasium. So let's uh, stand together as we close our session with prayer. Let us pray. And now may the Lord bless and protect you. May the Lord's face radiate with joy because of you. May he be gracious to you, show you his favor, and give you his peace. Amen.